What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool back for Practical Machinists as we continue our live coverage of IMPS 2024. And of course, the show wouldn't be a show without stopping in at Emco. Tim, thank you very much for having us. How you doing? Yeah, nice to see you again. Now, it looks like there are some pretty unique cutters here in front of me, and I have a feeling these are new. Yeah, absolutely. So, Emco came out with these six fluid end mills called the Power Feed six fluid end mill. Uh, it's uh, an all-around great design that we have. Uh, we're very excited about it. We introduced it about a year ago, but Imco has been making some huge capital investments in our plant, so we're really finally in a position to get behind it, get it out in the market the way that we want to. And for people who, who don't know, these are American-made cutters. Yes, absolutely. Perrysburg, Ohio, still considered part of the United States, so all made in America. So the beauty about these six fluid end mills is that it's a very, very aggressive design because we're all about metal removal rate. We're always very cognizant about making sure that a tool has to look at tool life and everything because that's important. But when you think about the overall costs that go into making a part, you know, 75% of your costs are, are pretty much fixed, right? You have admin, you got your machines, you got the, the cost of running the plant. So if I double the tool life on any end mill, I'm only saving a, a small percentage or increasing or decreasing the price uh, a small bit of the, right. the overall cost. But if I can double the cycle, uh, increase the cycle time, improve the cycle time, then we're really saving a lot of that's money. That's where you're really going to cut that's our carbon. That's where in. we're breaking into that 75 percent. That's what this tool does. So the six flute design has a very free cutting design where we can take an either a traditional tool path where you got a heavy outside roughing cut or even a slot cut and we can run up to two times diameter deep in your Z depth out clogging that tool up. It's very dramatic. But what it's really key about is that it can also do all the HEM tool paths. Right. So if you have a feature in your part where maybe you're not running one and a half to two times diameter deep in Z, instead of being stuck with a nine or 11 fluid end mill where you're going maybe seven to eight percent of the diameter and your radial step over, you can take this tool and run 15, 20, 25 percent step over, no 15 problem. 15 to 25 percent step over. Absolutely. I, it doesn't even sound like an HSM uh, tool. It's a lot of fun. Point. It's yes. a lot of fun. It takes <laughs> out a lot of time out of, the, out of the part, you know, a lot of time out of the part. And your entry moves are also much more aggressive. Typically with a, a five fluid ML, a six fluid ML, you're running about a three degree ramp angle, right. right? The Very way that the engine is designed. But we have some special grinds on the end of that tool that will allow us to, we're going to print in our literature, about a seven degree ramp angle, whether you're going to helical ramp down to Z or you're going to do a straight line ramp. But I will tell you, we've done much more than that. We've been very aggressive with that. Behind the closed lot. doors of the shop, I'm sure this yeah. has been attempted to plunge multiple yes, times. Yes, you can do silly things behind closed doors, and we know it can do that. So. But that's the point that you stand by. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't know what equipment everybody's running on, so we have to make it somewhat conservative in the printed literature. This is the safe, the safe parameters. Yeah. But we, we love the design so much that we're actually expanding the six flute into five flute, and also four fluid end mills behind you over there. Now, a lot of people say, what's so exciting about a four fluid end mill? They've been around since the dawn of end mill time, right? But with these four fluid end mills, with, combined with the things we learned on the six flute, that tool is an end mill, it's a drill, it's everything. You can take such aggressive entry moves on that. 60 degrees, 90 degrees straight plunge, like a drill, no problem. And let me guess, especially because that has such a high aggressive angle, although this would go good in seals, softer materials, brasses, this is a real yes. multi-material tool. Absolutely, you know, it's, oh, four fluid end mill is supposed to cut everything from soup to nuts, right? It's supposed to be your general purpose end mill, right? That four fluid will be able to do that, but it'll be very aggressive. Now, where you take the new to HEM tool paths that everybody's running, there are some limitations to that. Number one, we already talked about maybe it's a shallow feature. Right. But also, if you have a slot or an entry move that's not very wide, but it is pretty deep, that four fluid end mill is going to take that straight zigzag 
very tough ramp, 30 degree, 40 to 5 degree ramp, no problem. We see that a lot in the firearms industry, and that, that's really going to be very helpful for that. And I always see on these cutters, they have a very distinct brown coating. What kind of coating that's is that? A, that's a titanium aluminum silicon nitride. So the silicon nitride coatings have really made a lot of great strides uh, for really ex extending the tool life. You know, and cutting a wide range of materials. So, uh, love it on a lot of stuff. So, and you guys are even into ball noses. It look like, it looks yeah, like. absolutely. So, what we really like about these ball nose end mills, we have a six flute over there and an eight flute over here. And the key thing to these ball nose end mills, which we call the power arcs, is that half the flutes come to center. So, with an eight flute end mill, you're cutting on four flutes at zero at the full radius. All right. So, whether you tilt the end mill for 15 degrees or you cut straight on perpendicular, you're cutting with a lot more cutting edges right. than your standard two or four. So that helps us out if you're working a large mold and you're running a, a rough cut, a semi-rough, and a finish cut, we oftentimes can remove one of those passes, go from Just rough to Just completely eliminate one. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Or if you like running all three of them, that's fine. We can go much, much faster than a two or four fluid end mill. Bigger step overs, more aggressive Absolutely. feed rates, whatever it may Absolutely. be. Absolutely. And it leaves a great finish. That finish pass will be fantastic. Tool life on this is you know, phenomenal, and the feed rates are great. So. And of course, this is something that I've seen around, but I don't know a whole lot well, about them. The circle segment cutters that are coming out. We're going to bring those out in 2025. We're at the Big Tool Show, so we decided to kind of get a jump on them early and show those. We really believe in the utilization of the circle segment cutters. However, we know that's a big software change and a big change for a lot of shops. That's why we like these ball nose end mills. Everybody knows how to use a ball nose end mill, right? They're already, they're already using them now. So if you can improve upon that design, that's kind of a nice bridge from where they're at today to maybe the day that they decide to invest in the software and the equipment where circle segment cutters now make a lot of sense. Because they do have higher requirements than something like this, which you could run in a three axis mill. I do it all the time. Yeah. This, you know, you need five axis, you need the right exactly. cam software, but yeah. I have a feeling that if this goes the same way as these, you're going to see some pretty insane performance out of these as well. Yes. Uh, we have, we've made some prototypes. We've had a lot of fun with them. It's good to have a five-axis machine in a house to do a lot of testing on, which we do. So we, uh, you know, it's uh, the, the, lab, the lab work is a lot of fun work. It's you know? the best part so about being a machine. It is good. And so. of course, it looks like you guys have a lot of other tools here. This is a very large booth. Yeah, we have, uh, we have a large display. Walk all the way over here. We have our tried and true products that we've had out for a while now. We've talked about high efficiency machining. Uh, IMCO, uh, in our opinion, we've been a leader of that in the, in the industry for quite some time. So we have seven, nine, and 13 flute end mills. 13 flute, yeah. look at this thing. Well, you're, you're probably not running that on your, your small 40 taper uh, machine. Most likely but, not. But even a seven flute end mill can run on the lighter duty machines. And that's the beauty of the HEM tool pass. It's that you can, uh, you can make a high performance machine out of more uh, pedestrian machine that you right. might have. You don't need all the horsepower. It's nice to have it, but you can still get a higher metal removal rate than you can running traditional tool Absolutely. Pass. What kind of shops are you seeing put these in right now that are really trying to up their flute count? All, well, to go up the flute count are the people who have invested in the higher level of equipment. So automotive, a lot of, a lot aerospace. Of automotive, aerospace, definitely. Definitely aerospace. And the aerospace materials cut really well with HEM. Titanium, absolutely. Big time. Some of the pH stainlesses that we see, like 13.8, 15.5. And of course, the alloys, right? The high temp alloys. Inconel, alloy, all the dirty. Love ones. running, running these in those materials. Because the machinability rating is so low, this is a great way to actually really, you know, pick up, you know, and uh, improve on your cycle time. Oh, big time. So, a lot oh, of you fun. got them all the way up to, this is a six flute or something over here. Uh, yes, sir. So that's, uh, that's actually designed for hard materials. And with, when you're running anything that's over 60 Rockwell, you're not going to take a heavy cut off Yay. anyways, right? So, so that it kind of like is almost like the precursor of the HEM tools would be. You have a very thick core because you're not going to take a big radial cut. So with the thick core, that'll allow us to go much deeper in the Z-axis, kind of like the HEM just on dedicated towards really high rock materials. And with a real tight helix there to make sure you're right. really getting a light chip Absolutely. out of that. Absolutely. 
But if you decide, you know, if you're, we talk about HEM over here, but if you tr decide to go in a truly uh, traditional tool path, we have a, we make we make material specific products, and the Inconex is one of those. Where these tools, uh, it's a six flute demo, but it's not designed to run an HEM. It's designed to do that traditional milling type of path, but in Inconel. Side milling, pocketing. Yeah. Inco wow. 7, it's built for life. Now, doesn't mean that it's always exciting watching it, you know, move slow, because you're gonna run between six and 10 inches per minute. But it's the tool life that really wins on that, because it's a tool designed right for that material. Right. And we do very, very well with that product. And of course, there's a lot more here, so if people come by IMTS, you guys are gonna be here all week. Oh, absolutely. Make sure you stop by. If people couldn't make the show, where should they go to find out more about Well, go to our website, www.imcousa.com. We have all the tools out there, the whole catalog, everything there. And one of the best tools that's not a tool, we have what we call the Toolbot, which is an online calculator that tells you how to run your speeds and feeds. We incorporate a lot of information into it about your machine, the material, nice. and so on. But one of the nicest things about it is very user-friendly. It's very simple to use. And you don't have to register to use it, but if you do, you can build your own library. Oh, nice. And you can kind of keep your own list of what you're running. If you're a shop, you have that. If you're a salesman, you can keep what you've suggested to your, to your friends at the shop. So it's great. So make sure you guys check that out. Tim, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Us. And make sure it. you guys stay tuned as we continue to go live through, from IMTS through